man. You already know it's another take. Uh, just a conversation with Mr. J Hill conversation series. I have uh, conversations with a lot of creatives, people that's um, like-minded individuals. We have great conversations, man. Um, unfortunately, we had to do this one again, but mm -hmm. my guy Phil is in the building. What up, dog? What's going on, brother? How you feel? I'm all right, man. I'm trying to figure out how the hell we going to do this, but because the last conversation was just so genuine. It was just... Yeah, you know, there's other shit you could, we could talk about. You know what, what I mean? What did it's we a, touch on? Because uh, I might just drop that audio again. I just might just drop the audio and say, fuck you. Uh, man, man, hey, bro, I can't even remember, bro. We, we uh, talked about we so talked much. About we talked about a lot, a lot. I mean, and it, it, it went by so fast, yeah. so, you know. Um, we talked I, about you getting into radio and, and, and what made you even jump into the lane of doing your own radio because you got okay. your own station. Yeah. Um, so you were just telling me the back the back ends of that so i guess we can go into we can it just again. start from there okay yeah. so uh man i mean this like i said this is a funny story you know i i kind of like like dreamt of doing radio mm -hmm. so i kind of like woke up one day and just was like i'm just gonna start it but i didn't really know what i was doing you right. know what i mean so um just a quick story i think i said this on the last audio um ron ron dreams he did an interview at vvc Mm -hmm. You get what I'm trying to say, and then when I listened to the interview and things like that, you know, I was asking him questions on who he was dealing with and things like that in that market, and he kind of like linked me up with uh, JS1, mm -hmm. and uh, man, JS1 did like a, a three month deal at first. I wound up staying with him for like a year, but it was like a three month deal, and it, it was just getting my feet wet type of situation. You know what I'm saying? Then he was supposed to show me like. The mm -hmm. ropes, but you know how that nigga Jay do. <laughs> yeah, man. He gonna watch this. I'ma tell him like <laughs> we know how the nigga Jay do. <laughs> but no, uh, so yeah. so when you say the death for everybody that don't know what's going on, so JS One had his own radio station. Yeah, in Baltimore. BBC, right? Yeah, it mm -hmm. was um internet. So we talking about internet radio stations right now. Absolutely. So um, there's a guy named JS One, a supplier. Shout out to him. Y'all can go follow Absolutely. him. Yeah. Um, he had his own station where I actually started at at VVC Radio. Um, Phil was looking to get into radio, right? And then you said you did a deal with JS One. Yeah, I did. When you say a deal, what you mean exactly? By well, because I kind of like walked in there saying like, "Bro, this is what I want." Mm. You get what I'm trying to say, Mark? I don't have aspirations of being under nobody. Mm. You get what I'm trying to say? Right. This is what I want. You know, I want to have my own. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't know how to do it. And he just kept it real with me. He's like, "Yo, there's a lot to mm. go with this." You know what I mean? Maybe you should just sit back and learn how to be on radio first mm. you get what i'm trying to say and then figure out that's what you want to do so um we started out with a radio show called 1500 radio the outlet and that's when i like fell in love with radio just okay. being behind that mic is like different you okay know what I'm so to say? at first but you so you started wanting to own a radio station. You ain't, just wanted you, you to ain't own, start wanting yeah. to be on radio. No. Nah, so uh, when you say you did a three month deal, I'm assuming that you did a three month deal to being a talent. Being yeah, a being a talent, right? You know, being a talent. You know, uh, one just learning the business, the ins and the out. You know what I mean? Being a consumer, right? Like, or a customer, or whatever. First, you know what I'm saying? Before you uh, a business owner, and then right. I used to leave. I'm a real researcher, so I used to leave like VBC always taking notes every day like mm -hmm. what i what i would do what i wouldn't do sometimes i would give jay suggestions and stuff like that you know and then when i went on and i did my own i did it my way you get what i'm trying to say yeah, that makes and, sense. and i ain't saying like i'm a popular person but i mean i'm known by you know a lot of people per se so when i was putting it out you know a lot of people was gravitating to it because they already knew your, your style yeah they already know like you know my style a little bit or whatever so and then man once i signed my first show it just was like so but at first you only wanted to start your own radio show because i mean your own radio station because you had friends that was rappers yeah right? so that's that's really the reason why i wanted to do it you know how you think about something like man you know Back in those days, I'm really before I started radio, you know what I'm saying? Because I've always been around music, you know what I mean? We never really had an a outlet. Mm. Um, my cousin, he he's a rapper, and I remember when I was younger, we had uh, 105.7, mm. James, I think. Yeah. When they first started competing with like 92Q, uh -huh. and they was real like advocators of the local town. Mm -hmm. because like running like streets with it. Yeah, I think like back then, man, the only person I was getting radio play was like Tim Trees and mm -hmm. Boss Man, right? You know what I'm saying? And then um, 
when you uh got 1057 then you start introducing the city to people like Scar Akbar and Los and all these people they were just you know really showing love so when that that radio station fade away because you know back then 92Q was the big biggest yeah. thing in life we had K-Swift and yeah, you know I mean, she was taking over the airways and and she was putting a lot of people on in the city too. Yeah, you know I mean, she was showing love. Her squirrel wide, you know, squirrel wide still doing this thing. But I always looked at one hundred five seven like, damn, like yeah. they really was showing. Especially it, when they first came around, it was yeah, kinda like, it was like it was different, right? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so different, right? Right. That made you want to get into it right then and there. Yeah, right? it made me. It struck my interest. But when I start think, when I start. Thinking about doing radio, I thought back to those days on what kind of radio station I mm-hmm. wanted. Okay. You get what I'm trying to say? Because that platform set it, set the example of what I wanted. Just wanted to be an outlet to Baltimore yeah, artists. Yeah. That's why I said 1500 Radio Outlet. A lot of people don't know 1500 means that's my neighborhood. I'm from the 1500 Black Mass and the Bond Street. So, you know, you know, you bring all that together. You bring it home. Radio. Yeah, yeah, bring it home. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, that so, makes sense. So I wanted to, I want to be that person, and I think I'm, you know, I think I'm fulfilling nah, that purpose yeah, right now a little bit. Definitely like probably the most popular internet radio in the city, and shit, not even just internet radio, like radio period. Like yeah, yo, you know what? You know what I mean? I can, I get that. You know, it's it's some it's some other you know radio stations that's like doing that thing or whatever, but. You know what we doing is different, bro. You get what's, what I'm what's so say? different about it? That, how be, do you feel? <laughs> it's because I'm just a genuine person. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't make nobody feel like it's a job. You know what I mean? I ain't giving you no added expectations. You feel me? If this is something that you want to do, I'm gonna provide it for you. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? And I'm gonna try to do my best. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. You know. If you talk to ten people about me, you know I'm. I would say seven people will have something nice to say. Mm. You know what I mean? But you always, you know, have yeah, those one it. or two people. You know what I'm saying? That that probably don't like the way I move a little bit. But then, then again, you know, um, I'm neighborhood based, bro. You know what I'm trying to say? Like everything I do is like for the neighborhood. So I'm doing toy drives. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm doing. Uh, Clothes. I'm I'm in the neighborhood giving homeless clothes and feet and I'm a shit for Thanksgiving and stuff like that. So those type of things like import is important to me because, you know, I mean I come from nothing. You feel right. I me? Mean? So it's, it's only right that we give back. And it's it's crazy. Only, yeah. Because you you speak on the the the, the probably seven out of ten will have something positive to say, right? right. And we talked about this last time because that made me think even the three that probably had something bad to say that's probably because they don't know you as much, right? Right. Because yeah. You are you are like. <laughs> From a glance, from the first glance, you would think that you stand off because you right. don't speak a lot. But if you get to know you, it's like, yo, now he cool as shit. Yeah, you know, and you know, you know, I'm more of a, I'm a giver, bro. Right. You get what I'm trying to say? And that makes me sit back and analyze my, mm-hmm. my situation because, you know, I fuck with you. Right. So if anywhere I see you at, first thing I'm going to say, yo, you good? You, mm-hmm. What you drinking? You get what I'm trying to say? Yo, man, hook my man up. You get what I'm saying? Not really trying to be on no ball shit or be on no slick shit just because I just got genuine love right, for a person. We, you know what I mean? That's just yeah, how, that's how, how we am. give it up for real. Right. Like. That's them but a lot of people can take my quietness as arrogance. Right. Because when I speak, people listen. Do you think that and I think I asked you before, do you think that sometimes other people perspective of you of you being quiet or they might think you being arrogant, do you think that has messed certain business aspects up or opportunities up for you before? Mm-hmm. Nah. You no, know, because so. when I got when I have to talk, I talk. Mm. I don't think so because you, like, when you genuine, bro, it's easier. It's easy to be you, and it's easy for people to gravitate you. Right? Yeah, that's you a know fact. what I mean. Like, yo, oh, it's man, crazy. Comfortable. You know what I'm trying to say? It's crazy because, like, I feel like um, I had a lot of people say that about me. They think I was standoffish, and it's like I nah. thought that too. Yeah, a lot of people said that. And it's like, wait. Bro, honestly, sometimes I should be sitting back analyzing the room. Like, I'm just reading the room, like, seeing what's going on. Yeah, Or I might just probably be just chilling that day, you feel me? Yo, I mean, yo, it been plenty of times, man, you been in the same room with each other, ain't say shit to each other. Mm. Yeah. I ain't never think of it no no type of way, like, oh, that nigga being a dick or something like that. I ain't no, bro, look. Like, because niggas think I it's don't like know you, you. Hollywood. <laughs> it's like, bro, like. No, it's not. I'm not that. even thinking about, not, not no offense, but I'm not thinking about a person to, 
ignore them on purpose or something hey, like that. Absolutely. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm absolutely. just probably just in my own mind or something like right. that. You know, I mean, because I know one time, um, Sleep Corbin, that's one of my good good friends, business partner. You know what I'm trying to say? He used to work at 92Q. He gave me a lot of insight. And I remember one time, he was just was like something J Hill or whatever. Uh, this one made me really want to meet you. A little incident you had at your other little mm-hmm. spot and shit at the club and shit. Yeah, we ain't yeah. going to talk about no, it. No, I already talked about it. <laughs> I, I seen the interview. So, yeah, man. So, they were telling me the story about the shit, right? They were, they were like, yeah, such and such. And then they told me what happened. And I would look like, yo, get down like that. <laughs> 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 you get what I'm trying to say? I'm like, yo, get down like that. I mean, I don't fuck with a nigga like that. You get yeah. what I'm trying to say? Get, you know, it get a little bit more respect. You know, that a person can come from situation that, I come from, you know, mm-hmm. it made me, made me more intriguing like to listen to your story and things like that. I watched several interviews about you talking about that situation, but that's that situation, like kind of crazy though, is like what you know gravitated to me, gravi- it, gravitated me to you because one, I didn't like how the shit was handled, you know, mm-hmm. and I just felt like like man, if I can be an asset, you get what I'm trying to say, then I will. And that's when I gave you that call, that phone call when you host that mixtape for me mm-hmm. and shit. So. Nah, that was like that one too. of the like driving forces of me doing that. So speaking of us just like being standoffish sometimes, yeah. um, do you think that is it our is it, are we obligated to go outside of our comfort zone to speak to people because of the the lights that we are in, both of us, or well, just you? Um, no, nah, I really don't. I really don't think so. Like mm. you get what I'm trying to say, like man, everybody that's like I want to say like like us because fifteen hundred radio. Ain't paying my bills. Fifteen hundred radio is paying fifteen hundred radio bills. Mm-hmm. So I still work. So I can't really say I'm in that upper echelon of people. You know what I mean? Because I still have a nine to five job. Right. Most of you, most of you guys don't work. That's what, this is what y'all do, and I, and I got a lot of respect for that. You know, but when you is doing you, doing your thing, and I'm doing my thing, it's, it's no point of uh, me or you going out the way to to cross each other past because if it's genuine it's just gonna happen right but i'm sp- I'm, yeah. I'm talking about this in a like speaking aspect right like you just speaking man. yeah i mean because I, I think sometimes i can do a better job at just speaking trying to speak to everybody because a lot of times like you have people that look up to you and yeah you but how would you how would you know if a person look up to you you wouldn't that's you why wouldn't we gotta know. do our best so thing. so that's what i'm saying so me walking in a room you get what i'm trying to say me walking in a room in a setting or oh, how about you say like a a networking event? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We you in a networking event? Why would I be in this networking event not networking? So okay. I need to be Speaking. introducing myself, so passing off my my cards and things like that. But if I'm walking in a party and somebody like, oh yo, that's Phil from Fifteen Hundred Radio, and I walk past you, that's not no disrespect, right. bro. I'm with my minds and them. You get what I'm trying to say? If you stop me. Yo, Phil, what's up? Just you know I mean? yo, what's, what's up, bro? Is what's up? What's going on? Especially if I write, like, oh man, shit, come fuck with us. You get what I'm trying to say? Got you, I got because you. I'd rather us congregate and party together than you over there mad at me because man, that nigga Phil seen me. Yo, <laughs> he ain't speak. <laughs> nah, nah bro, you. it's not even like that. So it's just, so we gotta it's just do different a, settings. We gotta do a good, a good job at reading the room because yeah. it, it, all rooms don't require for me to go out my comfort zone to speak to you. But some rooms I do might have to be mindful. Of, all right, this is a, a networking event. Let me try to speak to as many people as I can. Right, but what I'm trying to say is not it's nothing wrong with you going in the room, mm-hmm. speaking to somebody that you look up to first. Okay, okay, I got you. So like, that eliminates people feeling any way. Yeah, if it's you, nothing wrong with that. I do that all the time. I got it. You get what I'm trying to say? I do that all the time. I I can go in the room if I like what you're doing. I already know what's going on. Mm-hmm. It's nothing better than a person coming up to you speaking on your accomplishments, especially when you feel like ain't nobody if you feel like nobody watching. Right. So shifted a little bit back to the radio, right? So yeah. you um you you own fifteen hundred radio, uh, internet radio station in Baltimore, out of sh- based in yeah, Baltimore, yeah. right? I got two. You I got, I got Paw City Radio too. Right, Paw City Radio as well. Yeah. yeah um, so talking strictly about internet radio, because that's just where I came from, right? right. And I no, I know a little bit about it. I f- do you feel like Matter of fact, I'm gonna ask you, how do you feel? What's the state of internet radio right now? Not even uh, just in Baltimore, just period, in your opinion. I, I ain't gonna hold you, bro. Uh, it's suffering mm. because 
everybody podcasting now. Mm. We come from an era when no people yeah, nobody was figuring went. it out, right? Yeah. So now you gotta do something different. So you do something different to the way as though uh, you have to cater more to the audience, the audience, the artists. I meant to say, I'm sorry, more to the artists instead of the audience, mm. because your artists will bring, bring your audience. audience. You get what I'm trying to say? I mean, everybody do podcasts. That's the reason why I got Podcast City. I mean, a little, little shameless plug. If you 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 don't, you don't know how to do a podcast, or if you looking for good quality, a one quality, you know what I'm saying? Come fuck with me. That's and the reason Podcast why. Podcast City is yeah, basically that's what that's what that, that that's what's that for. But I listen to a lot of podcasts, bro. I mean, I was just talking to your cameraman earlier, mm-hmm. and I was telling him I got an eye for quality. You know what I'm trying to say? Some podcasts I can't listen to is because they need help. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's when that's when what I feel like I can fill that void as far as podcasts. Damn. But so do you add video to it as well, or is it just I audio can. right now? Okay. I can. I can do. We can do video. We do audio. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I had uh, found this little way that you know for internet TV because you know mm-hmm. everybody trying to. Everybody trying to do a video now, so I'm like, well, shit, let me provide a platform for that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's like the type of things that I'm thinking about, you know what I mean? Because something small like that, scheduled programming can, you know, intrigue somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, shit, I can tell people, go on your platform, they can listen to me at, you watch me, listen to me at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? So that's that's kind of how I look at it. But if the station owners reinvent internet radio to like terrestrial radio, kind of like how DTLR do, then we'll be in a better state. And that's the transition that I'm making. You know what I'm trying to say? It's not all about just bringing in shows and they paying you no more. Well, that's a headache. I'd rather you do it in your house than, you know what I mean, getting on my nerves about something small, like you only can hear in one mm-hmm. ear. You know what I'm trying to say? All right, bet. How about this? I give you this list of list of uh, equipment and these websites right here, and you go and buy your own equipment, mm-hmm. and you can do it at your house, and you can do it at your, you know, the, your discretion, and whenever you feel like it. You know what I mean? That's so, crazy because it's like it's in a way you're still teaching. And you're still um, like providing people with information yeah. because people pay for information. Yeah. The fact that you're going to give somebody a site to say, all right, this is how you can get it. This yeah. is where you can get it from. And this is how you set it up. Like, I feel like. And that the reason itself, why I do that is because that wasn't done for me. Mm. Yo, it is hard. Well, I'm not saying right now it's a little bit easier because everybody's doing it. Right. So you can just literally is a click of a button with, and they give you everything you need and all the links. But I'm talking 2014, 2015, when podcast wasn't as popular, you know, and only thing you can do is get information about an internet radio station. They didn't have stuff like the Roadcaster and stuff like that. I was going out buying real live mixer boards. Mm-hmm. The big for, joints. Yeah, the big joints. Yeah. You get know what I'm trying to say? You got to learn how to work them up. Yeah, they, they and I, I got the handheld mics and stuff like that, man. I, I really got it out the mud for real. Right. I was doing that shit out the living room of my, of my apartment. You so why me? do you think that, what are some of the struggles that you're having now Now that you're in the game? Yo, to be honest with you, I ain't, it ain't even too many struggles. Mm. I'm at peace now mm. because I can do it without a lot of people. I only, I'm only really interested in working with people that love what they do. Right. So it makes it easier for you, too. Yeah, man, because you can get the best out of them. That's a fact. If you love it, I love it, bro. We can be on the phone. We can talk about this shit all mm-hmm. day. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yep. Yo, what we can do, hit this joint, hit this joint, you know what I mean? Or hit this person, hit that person. But it got to yeah. be some type of struggles that you encounter with uh, even now that you- I'm talking about, like, right now? Yeah, like- Right now? No. I mean- Nothing is giving you a headache. You just smooth. No, n- at this point right what, what now. Is, what are some of the headaches before. that you? Yeah, what are some of the headaches? The people. That you before? The people. It's always just been a people. It's always been a people. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, always been, been a people. people, and I love them. That shout out everything. Fifteen hundred past, present, and future. Mm. Loving it though, but that is the literally 
the only hiccup, headache, anything I ever had was the people. So if you know somebody I mean? else was trying to come up and like they wanted their own station, would you suggest being a talent first as well? Or what yeah, are some I would that suggest you would I would suggest being a talent, mm-hmm. and I would suggest don't put your business in other people's hands. Damn. So why why is why do you think being a talent is so important to be? If I want to be a manager, if I want to be have my own station, what, how are you going? All right. So if you a manager at a job, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Example. A lot of people don't know this, but I'm about to I'm about to give it to you. I used to be a chef. Before I transferred to Morgan, I went to Western Kentucky Community Technical College. Mm-hmm. I hooped in college or whatever. Now, yeah, man, and I got an A degree in culinary arts. So I was a chef for five years. Mm-hmm. So I'm interviewing for the chef job at at this hotel. You know what I mean? I'm in there. I'm dropping knowledge. All this school book stuff, right? Mm-hmm. He like, oh, all right, but all I got is a dishwasher position. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Everybody starts from the bottom in this industry. So I washed dishes for four years. Mm-hmm. Then the opportunity came. I worked on salads for a year. All right. Man, well, I got tired of doing salads. All right, but we're going to move you to banquets. Did that for a year. All right, we about to put you on the line. Did that for a year. Then the chef looked at me. He said, all right, man, you ready to be a lead? Because now you know how to wash dishes. You know how to make salads. You know how to do banquet. You know how to do the line. Now you can train people up and then manage them mm-hmm. to your perfection. It's crazy, bro, because it sounds like no matter what, no matter what area expertise, right? Yeah, you gotta learn everything. Like absolutely, you, you, you need to learn everything because it just makes you makes you more of an asset yeah, instead of a liability. Yeah. So when it comes to like owning your own station, it's def- definitely learn all the positions first. Absolutely, it, I mean, my favorite saying is, "Can a broke man tell you how to get rich?" Mm-hmm. That's why I don't read them how to get rich books. Mm. Like, bro, you wrote, wrote, wrote a How to Get Rich book, but you know what I'm saying? You you doing all right. You, you doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I man. Like I said, I get it. You know, broke man can never tell you how to get money. Nah, I feel you. Um, that was probably the best thing he ever could have done for me. Mm. Because one, I learned how to do radio. You know what I'm trying to say? I learned it. And second, I fell in love with it. Mm. Because if I didn't love it, then I'm like, what's the point? So what are some of the things that you're working on now? I said we at peace right now. You got everything yeah. rolling the way you want it to be rolling. Now what are some things you're working on for the future? Just uh, transitioning to that terrestrial style that I was telling you about. Mm. Being more of an asset to the artist instead of the audience. So how do you make that transition to, to terrestrial from internet radio? Because I'm pretty sure a lot of people would love to do that. How can I make that Transition. How do you? Yeah, because you said. Well, you I'm going to. I'm gonna stay on internet internet radio. I'm talking about uh, terrestrial style radio. Okay. Okay. So the, the format. style, the format, you. right? You. you know what I'm trying to say. So that's how you change yeah, it up for the future. That's now. how I change it up for the future. Instead of me having ten shows on Monday, ten shows on Tuesday, we're gonna just do schedule programming. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then my main focus is get everybody getting paid. You know, money just. Moving in circle. So how does that affect like that. the business that you have with the fifteen hundred radio that you got right now? Do you change it? Do you let people go? How does that how does that affect that? Or do you just have another component? Well my saving grace is um Park Park City. Mm-hmm. Park City Radio. Okay. You know what I'm trying to say? So if I'm taking fifteen hundred radio and I'm turning it into terrestrial style radio, then I'm gonna turn Park City Radio into fifteen hundred radio. Got you. You get got what I'm you. trying to say? Got you. you know you gotta have cash flow. Right. You know what I'm saying? Can't do nothing without cash. So um, I was building Paul City Radio t- to the quality of 1500 Radio. So well now when you listen to both, you get, you can't you get really the tell same. The you can't tell the difference. Right? So if somebody want to come in, they want to start a podcast, or they want to add a show to your, to your station, 1500 Radio or Paul pa City Radio, yeah. how would they approach the situation when and, and they, they email you, they just hit you on Instagram? How can somebody get a show on your platform? Oh, well, now, <clears throat> now if we ain't reaching out to you, you know what I mean? Because there's people that I'm, I'll am i be reaching out to. Okay. Things like that, having meetings and things like that. And um, 
So it's but it's too late now. It's too late to hop on a bandwagon. Nobody can hit well, you no, like y'all wanna. It's not even. I'm not even gonna say that. I, I ain't gonna say it's like too late. Podcast City is available. Right. To so everybody. somebody wanna get on that platform? How yeah, would they get yeah, on yeah. it? All you gotta do is just DM us, fifteen hundred Pod City Radio. Um, on uh, IG, mm-hmm. I check those, or you can hit up um fifteen hundred Radio, bottom of fifteen hundred Radio at Gmail. You may acquire that. It's a lot of people. It's really reference based. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna lie to you. So somebody just refer somebody and then yeah, you refer. It, you know what I mean? Because I I really gotta trust you for real. Okay. What are, what are the uh, like the average rates if I if I'm trying to again start a podcast or a show and man uh, we start and we start and as low as sixty a month, bro. Okay. At Paw City Radio. And what does that take care of? Everything. Mm. So All your podcast needs. You know what I'm trying to say? You know, as you want to build your podcast, of course, you know, it costs more and more. But, you know. But I mean, just to start off, I want to start, start my off. podcast, I'm looking at $60 a month. Mm-hmm. Starting off. Starting off. Okay. As low. As you low know, as $60 you know, a month. You know, in that marketing world, you got to be careful with your words. Okay. We start as low. As low as $60 <laughs> a month. I wanna, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just checking because, you yeah. know, a lot of people out there want to do this podcast thing that want to yeah. have a show. And so, and you got the quality. So, like, if somebody can get in, shit, hopefully they can look at it. Yeah, hey, I, I, I'm willing to take anybody that's willing to sit down with me and talk about their podcast because people start podcasts every day. Nah, facts. Yeah, and people, man. And people stop podcasts every day too. Yeah, <laughs> man. So, so I'd rather. So, like, the process is all right. You, you DM me. Yo, I want to start a podcast. All right, cool. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, that's set up by face to face. You know what I'm trying to say? Anywhere you want to go, you can meet me at the station. You can meet me anywhere. You know what I'm trying to say? We can go ahead and get it popping like that. And then if I'm feeling it, you know what I'm trying to say? Then mm-hmm. that's when the contracts and all that shit get involved. Makes sense. Well, to let niggas know where to follow you at and oh, um, yeah. all everything that you got going on. Oh, yeah. Um, I ain't big on Instagram and I ain't really trying to get a lot of followers, but. On my personal page, but y'all can follow Fit Sandra Radio on Twitter, IG, Facebook, Park City Radio on IG. Um, I'm around, man. You know what I mean? I ain't hard to find. I'm always at the station. I'm there every day. Already. So. Well, I appreciate the sit down with you, dog. Anytime, you know, we got things that we working on, too. Absolutely. And um, until next time, man. Absolutely. You know. I appreciate you, bro. Already. Conversation series, man. Shout out to my guy, Radio Phil. Make sure y'all fuck with him. Yes, sir. It's a wrap. We out.